if you find it hard to be kind with yourself, there's something in you blocking that kindness. These are rules for life, core beliefs that you've soaked up at some point in your past that aren't helpful. Part of learning to become kinder with yourself is recognizing these voices you've internalized and unsubscribing from them. Stay tuned to learn more. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Becoming an Expert at Self-Leadership. I'm Micah. I'm a psychologist. And today I want to share one of my favorite reflections that I do in therapy and group therapy sessions. Identifying internalized parental and societal voices that stand in people's way when it comes to self-esteem and self-kindness. I'll share three types of these voices, what they can sound like, and helpful alternatives to replace them with. On the whole, these blocks to self-kindness are rules about life you've picked up at some point, most commonly from parents, but it can also be from other people or media. These are ideas and beliefs about what you need to do to make life work, who you should be, and how you should behave. Whenever you find it hard to be kind to yourself, it's because your self-kindness would go against one of these life rules. The way to work through this is to identify the exact life rule that stands in your way and then to question it. Is this really a guiding principle I want to follow? What would be the consequences of that? What could be a more helpful guiding principle, core belief, conclusion, thought for me? To help you go through that process, next I'll share three common types of unhelpful inner voices, where they come from, and helpful alternatives. Number one, derogative, punitive voices. These are internalized voices that put you down and go along with emotions like shame and self-hatred. They can sound like, you're so embarrassing. Get your act together, you wimp. You'll never amount to anything. You don't matter. Your needs don't count. Don't take up so much space. No one wants anything to do with you. You're defective and unlovable. You're pathetic. You're rude and inappropriate. You're too emotional. Everything is better when you're not here. You'll never be happy. You want too much. Don't be ridiculous. Stop exaggerating. These voices obviously develop when parents speak like that to their kids, especially if it's done repeatedly, but they can also develop if these sentences were never said, but implied by the parents' behavior. This is the case when it comes to emotional neglect. So these messages may have been implied by the things the parents didn't say or do. Or in any case of abuse, counting emotional abuse, very strict punishment, or mobbing. We also learn to internalize these kinds of voices by observing what kind of a role models our parents are when they talk about themselves or other people. If these voices guide your choices and actions, they'll make you neglect, self-sabotage, and maybe even punish yourself. They won't allow you to be kind with yourself because they'll make you feel like you don't deserve it. They won't allow you to take chances because They'll tell you you're not good enough for things to work out for you. Kinder, more helpful core beliefs are I'm valuable. I'm lovable. 
I am enough. I give myself permission to feel my feelings and trust my thoughts. I give myself permission to be myself. I'm precious. I own my strengths. I have power and agency. I can do this. I'm allowed to let others see me. My thoughts matter. Number two, voices demanding outstanding performance, excessive effort, and toughness. These voices go along with fear of failure and mistakes. They demand you do an outstanding job at everything you do. They're not satisfied with anything less than perfection and demand that you never make any mistakes. They push you to exhaust yourself. And when you do make a mistake, they tell you that you're a failure. These voices can sound like a mistake is a catastrophe. You're not allowed to make mistakes. You need to try harder. You're only valuable if you've achieved something. Second place is the first loser. If it's not perfect, it's worthless. This isn't good enough. Tough them up. Stop crying or I'll give you something to cry about. Be strong. Don't let anybody see how you really feel. Voices that demand perfection, excessive effort, and flawless performance develop when kids are surrounded by messages that this is what's most important, or if they're punished very strictly whenever their performance wasn't perfect. It can also develop if parents emotionally withdraw. For example, if their kid has a grade that's less than perfect, and then the parent stops talking to the kid for the rest of the day. If you allow these kinds of voices to dominate your life, you'll probably have a hard time taking breaks and spending time with activities that nourish you but don't produce an output. Helpful alternative core beliefs for you to practice are 80% goal achievement is often more than enough. I can try. Fail stands for first attempt in learning. Feelings make me strong. I'm allowed to feel and express my feelings. I don't have to be good at everything. I love taking breaks and doing things I enjoy. My health is important to me. Number three, voices demanding excessive emotional sacrifices. This third type of unhelpful internalized voices creates shame and guilt. These voices address how you should supposedly behave in relationships, and they demand you provide others with excessive emotional care and attention even when it comes at the cost of your own health and well-being. These voices sound like, you have to take care of everyone. It's your responsibility to make sure everyone around you feels good. Stop being so needy, you're being selfish. Get over yourself and stop being so sensitive. Be quiet and good, that's all that counts. I'm lost without you. Not everything is about you. Don't make me sad. Your feelings don't matter. These voices develop when kids have to take on too much responsibility and or too soon out of many different reasons. This is called parentification, and often it's combined with a lack of emotional sensitivity on the side of the parent for what's going on with their child. The responsibilities that are given to the child can be 
responsibilities of basic life like chores or emotional responsibilities like listening to, comforting, or prioritizing others' emotional needs. Guided by these voices, you'll have a hard time setting boundaries and limits to how much, when, how long, and who you support. You'll struggle with identifying your own needs. You'll feel like it's wrong to have needs. What to speak of voicing them. New helpful core beliefs to practice. My feelings and needs are important. My responsibility has limits. I am existentially equal to others. I can say no and set boundaries. It's important to take care of myself. If I take a step back, I create room for others to get in touch with their own agency, accountability, and sense of ownership. You can strengthen any of these helpful beliefs by acting out the version of reality that is deduced from them. So at first, it won't probably make a huge difference if you've identified an unhelpful inner voice and then found an alternative helpful belief. It'll still feel wrong to some part in you to now start thinking and acting in this new way. But if you intentionally do so nevertheless, those feelings will change over time. And the new belief will feel more real with every day. And as a last invigorating thought, I want to leave you with this quote by Carl Rogers. The good life is a process, not a state of being. The direction which constitutes the good life is that which is selected by the total organism when there is psychological freedom to move in any direction. In other words, it's natural to be in a continued process of sorting and resorting yourself, reconnecting with your direction, and choosing and rechoosing the voices you want to live by. Take it step by step. Keep moving in the process and flow of the good life and you're right in the middle of it. <laughs>